I guess you might have a clue what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, dramatic intros aside, I figured nobody would want to sit here and watch these lights blink for an entire video. But today what we're going to talk about is a new pair of sunglasses. And maybe you recognize these before we get far at all, especially with the intro. But this is the Morpheus from the Matrix, the pair that Morpheus wears both the digital and the original guy. There were some tweaks from the original movie they did make to these, but... Come on, it's just the fact that it's the Matrix sunglasses alone is cool enough. But what we've got is a designer from London, Tom Davies, was kind of tasked with all of the glasses from this movies. I will throw some links down below so you can learn a little bit more about what they did in this case and how that all worked. But more importantly, what we're going to focus on today is this little childhood dream of a pair I have in my hand. Now, what we refer to as these in the optical world is a pince-nez, and you know, for obvious reasons, because it pinches the nose. Yeah. And that's how they hang on. What's cool with this one, I you know, I don't have the original design in my hand. I have a friend that has one of the original ones from the early, the original trilogy, the 2000s era Matrix, which we all know and love. I've heard mixed things about the new ones, but whatever, that's not what we're here to decide about today. The way these work, you have basically just the bridge piece that we know from three-piece rimlesses. It's made a little bit differently. It's definitely reinforced here in the middle. We've got a very thick section right there in the middle. Fairly lightweight. I'm not sure the material on these I didn't ask. I probably should have as to whether this was a titanium or a stainless, but at the end, it is just... It's incredibly lightweight, but it's not going to feel super lightweight, especially if you throw it across the room by playing with the springs. But what I did want to mention, there is a good amount of tension on these springs because that is, yeah, that's what holds it onto the nose. And what they've done here, they actually have a little bit different nose pad than you're going to see, and I don't think I can really get that on camera. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but what it amounts to is this has got a pretty good sticky tacky coating i am literally just sliding my finger across and you can see how much traction it has i am not pushing that direction at all it is just yeah even just the fingertip there touching the edge of it you can see how much grip that has and you know you don't want to go playing sports in these <laughs> Mostly just because you don't want to leave it on your nose for a long time because there is a lot of grip and pressure there. I bet if I wear this for the rest of the video, I'll have nice little red marks there. And you guys know how much I hate those. But it's just super cool to see this. I actually got sent one of these. It's number 965 out of only 3,000 total that they produced in these. And I got to get my hands on one. Now, for me, what I'm used to, that's not incredibly rare, but it is, especially for a pair that is advertised in mass. It's very, very unusual to see that few produced in something this iconic of a role. For an example, the 1613 from Varney and James Bond films, those are just mass produced, practically streamlined, and even then you can't keep up with it. Everybody wants that frame. So. Of course, it's no time to die, and it's James Bond. It's the last of the series. Everybody wants that one, right? Yeah, apparently. <sighs> but I just thought this was super cool. So, you know, a pair of glasses you're not going to see very often. It's not something you would want to wear for an extended period. As I mentioned, it does grip on the nose. But they've designed this to where it can be worn. The nose pads are interchangeable, so as those wear out or suddenly become not tacky, or if you lose one or break one, these are actually replaceable. The springs look to be serviceable on here as well. We've just got a screw that holds that in across the top. So if that spring did fail, which all springs eventually will, that's replaceable. Then as far as the finish on these, you've got a really nice matte. It's just like a powder coat black on the actual bridge on these. And again, really good construction overall. And it does seem the actual pinch pieces here are more of a semi-gloss. So we've got a little bit of contrast there. 
if I were making changes to this, I would have made only one tiny tweak and it is something that will bug the life out of me. I'm actually debating putting a prescription in mine in particular. And you'll see as I open this, and once it's on the nose, you do have those little slivers of silver dots. Personally, I'm not a fan of that. I think this should be entirely blacked out. So that's what I'm going to do when I make lenses for it. I am going to actually take and black out these little screws, bolts, I'm going to black out the bolts and see what I can do when I chamfer that lens to actually put all this together and still keep that black black. The outer edge treatment, of course, that's easy. Just a quick black pin there or lens that's fully dyed. So that's a little trickier when we've got a drill mount just because certain materials that work better in drill mounts don't typically work better for tents and absorbing it. That's another story. You guys don't care about all that as much. Maybe you do. If you do, cool. As far as putting prescription lenses in these, as I just mentioned, you do want to keep it pretty modest. I just have to keep playing with this. I'm going to wear this thing out before I'm even done with this video just because it's so freaking cool to just, there you go. And you know, it's funny, I did wear this around the shop for a while and I found I kept wanting to grab the arm to adjust where they're sitting and there's no arm there to adjust where they're sitting. But for the prescription lenses, if you wanted to go that route in this pair, first of all, you don't want to wear it for an extended amount of time because you've got this, you know, it can wiggle around a little bit, obviously. But to actually keep those optical centers lined up where they need to be in front of the eyes, hey, it's going to be different a little bit, at least, every time you put it on because, you know, you can mount it in a different place just depending on where you put it. So I wouldn't go much of a prescription in these at all. Mine's eh, around a minus one and a half, minus two ish. And that's really as far as I would go with this, just because once you get past that, you start getting some weird anomalies as glasses can move around on your face. I'm on the upper limit, yeah. But I'm gonna tweak the lenses. I think I'm gonna change that lens shape actually so it suits me a little bit better. While it won't be a true Morpheus at that point, which is cool in its own right, I have to do my own thing because that's what I do. Uh, I gotta say, this was super cool to be able to get these and do this video because I have been a huge Matrix fan. Love the original trilogy. Haven't seen the new one yet though. I started it recently, but I didn't get to finish it. It's been kind of a hectic year and the end of the year is not a great time for me to be going out and doing things. But if you're familiar with the film series and these guys here, let me know your thoughts on this incredibly iconic pair of sunglasses. And if you are interested in getting one, I am not a vendor for these, but I'll throw the link in directly to Tom Davies website where they do have these for sale. And hopefully you can get a pair before they're all gone. I wish you luck in that. Otherwise, let me know your thoughts below and I will catch you next time.